working to assessing uh, that situation. We also have Florida National Guard personnel uh, standing by to help the Army Corps if they need it. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, that is something that will be very, very critical to be able to, to get that back. And, and it may require more of a rebuild. Maybe it require uh, some, some more short-term remediation. They're going through that. Uh, but that's clearly a top priority. And um, we're, we're thankful that, that FEMA and the Army Corps are there helping out. Uh, we have, obviously, there was uh, a lot of folks in affected areas that evacuated. Uh, some uh, did shelter in place. Uh, as of last night, uh, we've contacted over 20,000 Floridians that filled out a shelter in place survey on floridadisaster.org. Ten, over 10,000 have responded, and, and all 10,000 said they were safe. Um, and the state sent the first alert late, late last night and are expecting more responses this morning. Cell phone connectivity is sparse in some areas and sometimes easier. It's easier to get out a text message. Uh, so the, the process has been streamlined. There's now a standalone site to report uh, your location. So if you're having issues contacting your family via phone, uh, and if you're sheltering and want them to know you're safe, there's a website, missing.fl.gov, missing.fl.gov. Uh, these forms are triaged uh, by uh, staff here in Tallahassee and dispatched to responders that are on the ground. In addition to the rescues yesterday, uh, rescue personnel have gone to more than 3,000 homes in the hardest hit areas. Uh, going door to door to check on the occupants of those residences. There are over a thousand dedicated rescue personnel who are going up and down the coastline. Uh, they all also are going to be doing more and more inland in some of our counties, uh, inland portions of Charlotte and Lee, uh, but also DeSoto and, and Hardy counties. I think Hardy County is the most without power right now. If I think they're 99% without, or they're pretty. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so you, you see the the the, the really uh, troubling images of a, dis a washed out home on on the Fort Myers Beach, and that really is ground zero, and obviously very important. But this was such a big storm that there are effects far inland, and these rescue personnel are sensitive to that, and they are going to be helping. We've opened two major points of distribution for food and water this morning. Uh, first, Charlotte Sports Park, the spring training facility for the Tampa Bay Rays in Charlotte County, and then the Lee County Sports Complex, the spring training facility for the Minnesota Twins. Uh, these are pods that are much bigger than normal pods. Uh, there have been over 1.6 million gallons of fuel into southwest Florida that have been moved in to support the response. I think what we're finding with the fuel is uh, the fuel supply is flowing. It's just a matter of the, the gas stations need to have power to be able to operate. And if they have a certain number of pumps, they're required to have a generator. I was in Lee County yesterday, actually saw you know some of the larger gas stations were operating. Uh, so, so that's a good sign. As of 6 a.m., there are about 1.9 million people, our customers, without power. Uh, right now, the hardest hit areas are, Char are Hardy, 99% without power as of this morning. Charlotte and Lee both have 85% without, it, and DeSoto is at 80% without. Sarasota, uh, Collier, Manatee, uh, close to half uh, of the customers there uh, are without power. Uh, Hillsborough and Pinellas, um, 15 to 18 percent are without power and these crews have been on the ground since it was safe to do so and they are working 24 7 to be able to restore power all throughout the state of Florida uh, and that's uh, over 42,000 linemen and associated personnel that, that are on the ground. Uh, FDOT has had over 1,300 people on the ground. They've cleared more than 1,100 miles of roadway. I was happy to see the traffic flowing in Southwest Florida. Obviously, there's some structural problems in some of the bridges uh, leading out to Sanibel and Pine Island. Uh, but by and large, uh, there were toss and clear operations. The traffic is flowing in, in, uh, in Southwest Florida, probably better than would have been anticipated so soon after such a major hurricane. Uh, so we appreciate that. They've also inspected and reopened 800 bridges across the state. Uh, and this includes 67 high priority bridges inspected and reopened in Lee, Charlotte, Sarasota, and Manatee counties. Um, Pine Island, Sanibel, those are gonna be rebuild efforts. Uh, the Sanibel Bridge had 
uh, breaks in multiple parts of it. It was not where the water and the pylons were. Those held up very well. It was where you had it uh, on some of the sandbar, and that basically just got washed out from underneath. In the meantime, uh, and Kevin can talk about this, you know, he's going to be, they're going to be running barges to be able to bring more heavy equipment onto the island to be able to help uh, with the response. The first responders that have been there, by and large, coming in via air, you know, they do have some equipment, uh, but they're traveling lighter just to be able to go and get to people quick as quickly as possible. There have been six healthcare facilities uh, uh, evacuated in Southwest Florida. Uh, they were not, they were having problems with water or problems with power for an extended period of time. Uh, we're also prioritizing getting power and running potable water uh, to the rest of the area's healthcare facilities. There have been 117 facilities uh, that had lost power that now have power restored. Uh, the ports, Tampa Bay, Miami, Everglades, uh, they are reopened for fueling. Uh, and I think between today and tomorrow, all the ports in the state of Florida, uh, up and down the, both coasts, will be uh, operational. Food and water, uh, massive amounts, and we're, Kevin is sensitive to the water situation in Lee. So I'd say this is an extraordinary amount of, of water that has been staged and is continuing to be brought into uh, the area. So FEMA has activated their individual assistance program. So if you're in need of help of recovering in those affected counties, you can go to disasterassistance.gov or call 1-800-621-3362, 1-800-621-3362. 34,000 people have already registered with FEMA. Uh, make sure if you are looking at claims on your property, you document that, take photos, make sure you have it. Uh, we want you to be able uh, to be made whole as quickly as possible. Uh, there will be, in conjunction with FEMA, uh, the state of Florida, and the local communities, uh, what are called disaster recovery centers. Uh, you know, those will be set up uh, very soon, and that will be a place if you need help with things like individual assistance, you can go. Although, you know, Gracia will point out, you don't need to go there. You can do all this online. Uh, there's also going to be insurance villages uh, set up under the uh, leadership of CFO Jimmy Patronis. You're going to have a lot of flood insurance claims as a result of this. You know, you will have um, some wind uh, claims as a result of this, and it's our view that you know, these claims need to be paid very quickly so that people can get back on their feet. I want to thank the First Lady for spearheading our efforts for Volunteer Florida and Activate the Florida Disaster Fund where people can donate. If you want to contribute, uh, you will be joining um, a lot of people who've done a lot of money, and we now have over $12 million with you know, 24 to 36 hours after the storm hits. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty incredible that, that that's happened. If you want to do, go to floridadisasterfund.org, floridadisasterfund.org. Um, more than 12 million has come in, and there's a lot of interest to do a lot more. Why is that important? You know, FEMA has certain things they can do via statute regulation but if it falls outside of that they just can't do it that's not the way it works and so when you enlist private organizations they can be a little bit more nimble they can tailor their response to maybe some of the more unique needs that citizens may have and, and obviously you, you have people that have been di uh, dislocated you, you have people that no longer have homes uh, and so there's going to be a wide variety of things uh, that they're going to need uh, in the coming days weeks and months Volunteer Florida. If you want to volunteer your time, visit www.volunteerflorida.org to find volunteer opportunities. I think this is one way where you can really make an impact, and I know people really appreciate uh, all the outpouring of support. Uh, I want to commend the folks uh, that we were able to meet with down in Southwest Florida. You know, this has been a, a, a major uh, event, of course, and these people have been working around the clock uh, to be able to serve their, their constituents and serve their communities. And we appreciate the dedication. We appreciate uh, the perseverance. Uh, we know that there's a lot of difficult days ahead, uh, but they've really done a great job. Uh, standing up for the people of their community. Um, I'm going to let Kevin give a brief uh, on the state response, uh, and then we'll have the FEMA administrator uh, come up and provide some perspective from FEMA. Thank you, Governor. So I, I'll obviously thank you, the Governor, but I want to thank the uh, agencies represented here to my left, uh, especially Gracia, uh, FEMA Administrator Deanne Criswell. Captain Rooney and Admiral uh, Brendan McPherson from uh, the United States Coast Guard, 
others that are not here that are certainly on that floor behind me. Lieutenant Colonel Miller from the U.S. Army Corps District out of Jacksonville, Colonel Booth out of Jacksonville, and, and many, many other federal partners that have certainly helped us here. Um, Colonel, or I'm sorry, Captain, if you can just grab that easel and just put it right back up here for just a second, I'd appreciate it. I wanted to thank them before I um, covered them up with a sign here in just a second. So, all right, so let's talk, uh, we're right in that 72 hour area of search secure, stabilize that I talked about yesterday. So everything that I wanna talk about right now is about that search, secure and stabilize. So we continue to have uh, our fire uh, rescue partners, search and rescue going in there and uh, conducting the, uh, what we call the hasty search and then they're coming back and do their primary search and then they'll do a secondary search. So again, I think it's very important for everybody to know that as a part of the search and rescue element over a 72 hour period, there's actually three searches that are conducted. That hasty search is just very quick, see if they see any uh, survivors that are alive or in a traumatic situation, and they start to move those individuals to safety. That's been conducted. Now we're back in that primary search area, which is now we're doing a little more detailed search, and then we'll do a second search behind that. Stay safe. I want people to be make sure that they are safe. This comes down to personal preparedness, or I should say personal preparedness, but the person individual response. Generator safety, we have been talking about it and talking about it and talking about it, but we still get reports of people operating their generators inside of a garage, operating their generators just out of side of a cracked window with a cord running through the window, and we're having continued issues with carbon monoxide, all right? I'm not saying we've had carbon monoxide deaths, I'm just saying that we're still having carbon monoxide issues. Please operate your generators in a safe mode. That also includes not having electrical cords actually run through puddles of water. Let's make sure that we got them elevated and not running through puddles of water. Next, as I mentioned last night, chainsaw safety, ladder safety, wire safety. If you don't know what it is, don't cut it. If you don't know how to cut it, don't cut it. Let the professionals come in and do that. We have more than 2,000 resource requests from our impacted local partners and more than 1,700 are in process or completed. I think there's a very important bullet to note here. A lot of counties put in mission requests for bulk food and water when we had a 45, 50 county disaster. Now we have counties starting to cancel their food and water. So when we say 2,000 and 1,700, we have this 300 gap. I wanted people to understand there were 2,000 mission requests. We're filling 1,700. Some of those are going to be organically canceled because they're not impacted at the county level. We've mobilized more than 14,000 gallons of diesel to Fort Myers for a water plant to provide water to nearby hospitals. We've deployed two for uh, Hernando County uh, fire and two Hernando County sheriff uh, sheriff staff to use drones for, 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 I'm sorry, for photography and video of flooded areas in DeSoto County. And I want to make sure that I take this time to say thank you to our restoration crews who have been able to take 500,000 individuals and get them power back. We're down to 1.9 million in the power restoration area that still need to be restored. Again, thank you to our first responders. I want to bring in, we're starting to get some questions about food and distribution points. So I'm going to ask Brian to give me this, uh, this graphic that we've made here. And I think this is important for a couple of reasons. We talk about a family personal preparedness plan. So what we've done here, we are in day number two, three of the response disaster. This is where your personal family plan is being executed. This is why we've asked, we partner with FEMA on this, have three to seven days of water. We talk, you, you hear me talk a lot about five to seven in Florida. So again, days one through five, personal family plan. This is the food and water that you had. Now we do have food and water at shelters, if you go into a shelter. The next phase of this you'll see is an orange. This moves us from the family plan over into the National Guard and local community level point of distribution plan that will run for somewhere between 72 hours and about 120 hours, so three to five days. So as we exit that, again, we're way back over here, we will then come in with mass feeding kitchens. 
Those mass feeding kitchens will be designed to provide those hot meals three times a day to the most impacted communities that still don't have food and water. And I, we're getting some questions, the First Lady is getting some questions, and I wanna make sure that we take the opportunity to educate individuals as a part of how everything ties together. So again, personal plan, National Guard food distribution plan, which is water and dry food at our points of distribution, and then we'll move into a hot feeding kitchen plan. So I thought it was important for everybody to understand how all that connects, and that as we continue to get questions about that, where is your government? Today, we are in the process of moving National Guard to the bulk food has gotten to those two locations the governor's already mentioned. Now we're moving down to the community plan, which is that local National Guard element that's gonna go up and set that up. I'm working with Lee County today, which is obviously the most impacted county. They have eight community pods that will be opening, hopefully in some uh, form or fashion, moving cars through them later today in eight locations. I'm gonna let Sandra take the lead on announcing those locations at the local level for her staff so that uh, when they're ready, we're ready. But I wanna make sure we tie all that together. Last thing I wanna talk about now is as individuals start to move debris to their curbside, you must, you must separate it into piles. My uh, communications team will be giving graphics at another uh, uh, update today at the uh, five o'clock or this evening update. We will tell people how to separate their debris into piles. But if you're doing it now, vegetation needs to be in its own pile. Structural, this is food, or I'm sorry, I'm, structural is furniture, building, materials, plumbing issues. That needs to be in a separate pile. Then we call it household hazardous waste. These are your, your, your cleaning supplies, your batteries, your pesticides, anything that's hazardous goes into its own pile. Electronics, TVs, computers, things of that nature go into its own pile. And the last pile is what we call white goods or appliances need to go in a separate pile. So again, recapping, that's vegetation, structural, household hazardous waste, electronics, and appliances. As always, when moving stuff, if it is too heavy, get help. These are, these are absolutely avoidable deaths and absolutely avoidable injuries. Get people to help you. We have many faith-based community groups. We have Team Rubicon, individuals willing to help you to get that stuff to the roadside. So please be safe. Use gloves, use goggles, make sure you're wearing boots, make sure you look for power lines that may be mixed up in all of this debris. Thank you for allowing me to do a little extended briefing today and provide you a little more detail. We'll be back this afternoon with some more information. And as always, Governor, thank you very much for your leadership. Okay, Administrator, floor is yours. All right, thank you. Governor, thank you first for allowing me to join you here today. And I'd also like to recognize my regional administrator, Gracia Check. She has been on the ground since before this storm hit, working side by side with Director Guthrie. Um, but it's not just that. Our regional office works with the state of Florida and all the states within Region 4 throughout the year to make sure that we are planning, we are coordinated, and that when we have an event like this, we can seamlessly move in to assist and support the state with their needs. Uh, what we have done um, prior to landfall is we did stage a lot of search and rescue resources to support the great efforts that have been happening here um, in the state of Florida. We have those resources available as the state needs it. Um, and we've also begun to move in food and water into those points of distribution to support what you just heard um, from Director Guthrie um, and the governor. Uh, what I want to say is we are here to support. FEMA is here to support these ongoing efforts right now to continue the life-saving missions that are, are still ongoing, but also to begin to support the recovery mission. Uh, as you heard the governor say, the president did declare a major disaster declaration for individual assistance as well as public assistance. Public assistance is gonna allow us to reimburse a lot of the costs for the first responders who have been doing an amazing job. Allow us to reimburse some of their overtime costs for all of the work that they've been doing to stabilize this incident. And on the individual assistance side, right now there are 13 counties that have been designated for individual assistance, but we will add more. As 
we continue to do assessments and it hasn't been safe to go into those neighborhoods, we will continue to add more counties so individuals can apply for assistance through FEMA. And I just want to reiterate how you can do that. You can go to disasterassistance.gov, you can go to one eight or you can call one eight hundred six two one three three six two or you can go to our FEMA app. I also want to um, let people know that we are going to have teams of individuals that are going into the shelters to help them register for assistance. Right now we know that many people are away from their home. They may not have access to the internet. They may not have access on their cell phone. And so we're going to send teams to go into the shelters to begin that recovery process for them. Uh, Governor, I just want to commit to you and on behalf of the president, we are here to support this recovery. We know we're still in a very active response stage. We're going to go into the stabilization, but we've already started planning for what the recovery is going to be because we know that this is going to be a very complicated and complex recovery. We want to make sure that we have the right resources. So I appreciate the opportunity to join you today so I can see firsthand what some of the needs are. I've brought recovery and um, response personnel with me to make sure that we are bringing the right resources to support the governor's needs and what his concerns are. So thank you very much. Okay, any questions? Uh, I got two quick ones. Uh, first of all, do we have an update on casualties? And second of all, obviously you're meeting with the administrator today. What are you asking for? What does the state of Florida need from FEMA? Well, I think the the, the number one thing that, that we needed, you know, that they provided, which was the Army Corps to support Lee County and, and their water situation. Uh, critical, critical to get that infrastructure back up and running. Uh, you look at this storm, you know, obviously there was really significant damage, but you also have a lot of folks who had minimal or, or maybe no damage and getting them back, you know, make sure they're in their homes, they have the running water, uh, the electrical, all of that is going to make all the other efforts uh, so much better. So, so we appreciate that, but I think that is probably the, the number one priority. Kevin, would you say that that's probably the number one priority? And, you know, the Army Corps, they're the subject matter experts, and so hopefully they get a diagnosis and then they can plan and, and, and the county can go in and fix it. I'll let Kevin talk about uh, the other. So where we stand right now on fatalities is, uh, I'll break this down um, by county. We have one confirmed fatality in Polk County. We, tw we have 12 unconfirmed fatalities in uh, Charlotte County. We have eight unconfirmed fatalities in Collier County. And we are still processing through the situation with the hasty search that I mentioned before in Lee County. Now, let me talk about confirmation and unconfirmed. People die in disasters that have nothing to do with the disaster, right? So the medical examiner is the one that makes that determination. They are the lead agency at the local level to determine when they investigate that this is either disaster related or not disaster related. If it is determined to be disaster related, you've heard the governor and I talk about this now for about three or four days, it is a direct death, in other words, storm surge, rising water, things of that nature, or indirect, the stuff that led up to it after the fact. So with that being said, we have 12 unconfirmed fatalities in uh, Charlotte County. We have eight unconfirmed fatalities in Collier County. We have one confirmed fatality in, um, in Polk County. So that brings us up to 21 total. We do have an identified situation uh, that was done during the hasty search um, of, of some fatalities. Um, we do not know exactly how many were in the house. And, and let me paint the picture for you. The water was up over the rooftop, right? But we had a Coast Guard rescue swimmer swim down into it and he could identify that it appeared to be uh, human remains. We do not know exactly how many. We do not know what the situation is. And before we comment on that, we, you know, we want to be transparent, but we just don't know that number. And we got a couple of other situations where we had that particular type of situation. So right now, the number we're going with is we have 21. We have identified a situation for sure that we know we got something in, but until the water recedes and we get the special equipment, again, We've got to have special equipment to get in there. And as the governor's already talked about, is we can't get that over there. So I'll take just a point of privilege there and talk about that. We've got a 20 by 40 foot spud barge that's now been delivered that we can now start traversing some heavier equipment. Um, in, in the search of world, world rescue, this is called Hackneys. These are basically um, 
like beer delivery trucks, soda delivery trucks that have specialized equipment that we can get on that spud barge, get it on the uh, land, the other side and start doing some really technical type of rescue. Once we get to that point, then we can probably give you some better numbers. But where we're at today is 21, one confirmed, 20 unconfirmed. I have a question for clarity on um, the survey. Governor Jim mentioned that there were about 20 thousand people that had responded to the survey, 10,000 were contacted and they were fine. Does that mean that 10,000 have not responded and they're not okay? Or? No, that, that's not what that means. Um, so for instance, right now we have about 14,000 people just in Lee County, I believe it is, well, I'm sorry, across theater, across the three counties, we've got about 14,000 people in shelters. So um, we are now, we, we, we did an automation of collecting data we are now at a point where in this 10,000 is we're physically having to find people. Do they have co communications? Can we get them on the cell phone? In the hardest hit impacted area, we may not have cell phone capability. So we are trying to, it's gonna take us some time. If you guys recall back when I was here for Hurricane Michael, we had over 30,000 people. And then we whittled that down to 3,000. And then we whittled it down to 300. And that just happened organically over time. But I re if you recall, between indirect and direct deaths for Hurricane Michael, I think we only had 77. So that number is going to continue to squeeze itself down, down, down as we have the ability to get into shelters and find people that are registered inside of shelters. People will register via the FEMA app, FEMA website, on the phone with FEMA, person to person with FEMA, and then we'll start to be able to whittle those numbers down between federal data, between state data, between local data, and we'll, that, that number will continue to, to shrink. But again, we are way ahead way ahead of where we were at for Hurricane Michael when I was here on this floor for that. Two, we were 30,000 weeks into that situation. We're down to less than 10,000. We're only day number two. So that, that number is going to continue to come down drastically. Instead of that, that 10,000 number, uh, just maybe a, a combination of whether they're missing, out of contact, out of power, not the location might be, it might have changed, or what exactly? Right. How so, would you consider so the categories? All, all the aforementioned. Uh, and, and for those that didn't hear the question, <clears throat> what categories will we put this into? Those without power, those without communications, those that are just trying to still reconnect with loved ones. The, at the end of the day, it's all of those categories. But again, we will shrink that. That will organically shrink day by day. Um, that the, the pod that's right behind me, 30 feet behind me, are human services. There are, no, there are people that are dedicated to doing nothing but that and taking the information that comes from Urban Search and Rescue and connecting that data and whittling that list down. So we have a number of missing people at this point in time. Right now, so <clears throat> again, missing people is a local law enforcement jurisdiction. All right? So if you want to ask questions about what are the missing person numbers? That's got to be a local county sheriff or a local law enforcement ask. Governor, speaking of uh, county sheriffs, uh, appreciate the um, transparency on casualties. Do you think the message that the Lee County Sheriff put out uh, was premature or makes your messaging more difficult? Look, I mean, I think, you know, these are stressful situations. I think that when you have a storm like that bearing down um, on your community and then obviously hitting the community, uh, you know, the people were going through that, they're working, but, you know, you kind of have a lump in your throat because you just don't know what's going to happen. And I think that um, th that was done because there's concern for the well-being of the people of Lee County and there's a concern uh, of the damage uh, that the storm has done. I mean, clearly, you know, it's, it's packed a big wallop. Um, you know, when you look at some of these things, like you see a house totally washed out, and it's just nothing but a concrete slab on Fort Myers Beach, uh, you know, you just pray to God that no one, no one was in that because, you know, some of these things, you know, these people on, on Sanibel that have the real big houses, they, they could hunker down and, and it'll pass and their, their homes are raised. And so the surge they're probably protected from. Uh, some of these others, uh, particularly some of the older construction, didn't stand a chance in that. And so you just hope that those were folks that, um, that, that had left or that those, those structures were not occupied. So I think it was just about, uh, you know, the, the concern for, for what they were facing and uh, the fact that, you know, you did have people that, that as the storm was in process, you know, there were people that, that, that were really concerned with what they were seeing, with the water rising um, and whatnot. I am, though, I think, um, and I think Kevin would agree, 
as the, the search and the rescue folks have gone to a lot of these areas, you know, fortunately, you're not finding like desperate people waving, to, you know, saying that you, it's usually, you know, there's some people that are brought off the island, they're thankful, but many of these people on Santa Bell some are saying we're fine, thanks for coming by and doing that. So, so there's obviously there's going to be more that happens in the next few days, uh, but I do think the response was very, very quick. Uh, I think it absolutely has made a huge difference. And if you just look at where are we at in rescues now? I mean, we're over 700 rescues. We're over 700,000 rescues, but um, uh, the CFO's office has over 3,000 touch points. So that, I think that's an important number. We've made contact with 3,000 people in the field, touch points in the field, and actually rescued 700, sir. Yeah, so, but, but this is ongoing. Those guys have worked really hard, and especially you think about who was the first one to get over there, literally driving through Tropical Storm across Alligator Alley, was uh, Task Force 2 out of Miami. And wh who was Task Force 2? When, when did we see them last in a public way? We saw them at the Surfside disaster. We saw the Task Force 1 there, and many other task forces from around the state and the country that came in. Uh, so when they're doing this, it's, it's obviously important work, uh, but, but these are not easy missions to be doing on. I mean, it was not easy for them to be on that pile in Surfside and search for people and unfortunately, you know, find uh, many, many people uh, who were killed in that collapse. And so now they're in a situation, you know, where they're looking and, and hopefully they find people that are okay or that the, that the buildings are empty. Um, but, you know, you don't want to have to see people that had gone, uh, that, that, that didn't make it through. And so, so it's, it's a physical, it's, it's putting yourself out there in harm's way, but it does also take a toll. And Kevin, why don't you talk about the mental health that we're doing in sure. here? Sure. So uh, in the mental health category, um, the, this, if you recall, uh, at very early on in the DeSantis administration, First Lady uh, Casey DeSantis took on the role of providing for first responder mental health to include of hiring the first ever in the division, a state mental health coordinating officer. So uh, uh, Sarah Newhouse is our state mental health coordinating officer. She is housed here in the Division of, uh, of Emergency Management. She has a bifurcated chain of command, me on a day-to-day -day basis, but in a disaster situation, she reports directly to the First Lady to help coordinate those disaster mental health services, not only for disaster mental health in general, but even more importantly focused on first responder mental health. So you're gonna see already there are already embedded uh, what we call critical incident stress management teams or SISM teams for short. Those are already on site and you're going to continue to see first responder mental health resources come into the area, including uh, FEMA's uh, first responder mental health services, as well as uh, individual mental health services, as well as ours. So again, it's we have a person I'm titled the state coordinating officer to coordinate all of these state agencies that respond to a disaster, but we have a person that just takes a subset of mental health and is that state mental health coordinating officer that works under me and underneath the first lady for disaster mental health. Okay, thanks guys. Good night, satellite. The satellite operations center. Good night, media capturing services.